As we speak, I'm on my way to pick up a complete collection of N64 games. It's the US license set, which means there's 296 games and we have secured a deal on every single one of them. Now yes, there's games that are worth like a couple dollars, $10, $20, $50, over a hundred, but there's even one that is worth over a thousand dollars. It's actually the most rare non-variant game that you can find on the N64. In this video, we're gonna talk to the seller of these games, talk to top collectors, and even give away some of the games that we pick up. But before we take a deep look at it all, we need to explain the crazy story of how we got here. The N64 is one of my most memorable childhood systems. My first system was technically the Super Nintendo, which we got on sale at Toys R Us, but N64 was really the system that impacted my childhood in gaming the most. Specifically, this game right here, Mario 64, the glorious 3D sandbox Mario that rocked my world, and I'm pretty sure it rocked the world of a ton of people. It was a mind-blowing game as a kid. I've been collecting N64 games for a very long time. In fact, since 1996 when the system first came out. I'm currently in the process of moving my entire N64 collection into a new game room. But here's some of my favorite collection pieces. So Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. We played the heck out of these games as kids. And the transfer pack, bringing over your Pokemon from Game Boy to N64. That blew me and my brother Quinn's mind. Spider-Man N64 sealed. Uh, love sealed collecting. I did a lot of that in high school. And then Mario Party 2 was probably the game, that and Smash Bros, that we spent the most amount of hours on. Those are packed away in bins, but I absolutely loved those games as a kid. So collecting is something I've always done. It's something I've always loved from five years old up to now 29 years old. And I've always collected things that are fun or interesting to me. I've never really been a completionist. So it's kind of funny that I'm going to buy a complete N64 collection. Even the N64 systems are fun to collect. So here's all the fantastic N64 systems. I love these things, all the colors, plus the gold one. Not to mention the controllers. So I love the controllers because some of them are actually unique and don't even have a system that they pair with like Extreme Green, the Donkey Kong 64 controller. I'm actually working on getting one of the rarest, only 1,000 made and 64 controllers for the collection soon. But this isn't it. I've got a ton more of controllers in the game room. Sweet mercy. <laughs> you have more somewhere else? Hi. Oh. <laughs> Aha, there you go. <laughs> I just love them. They, they literally make the colors of the rainbow. Like you can get Roy G. Bit, well, all of them in, in Fantastic and in Solid Colors. And buried back here is some of my favorite pieces, the gold controller in the blister pack, the Pikachu N64 and all of the box systems with the battle set right in the center of the box controllers. I love this stuff. Okay, get down. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> so the systems and controllers haven't really been displayed because I'm in the process of building a new game room, which I'm super, super excited about, and I wanted to do them justice and have an awesome controller display, but I need more room. Anyways, I've got a lot of games, but some of the games that we're gonna buy today, I've never actually seen in person before. So before I pull the trigger on an N64 collection like this, I need to know more on N64 collecting as a whole and get some more information on the top games. Well, I don't wanna be stuck Googling stuff and just repeating it back to you, so let's ask some other top collectors about their N64 collections. But not just any N64 collectors, I called up Greg from Get The Greg Games and Mort from Mort's Garage. They each have immaculate N64 collecting experience, much more than myself, and I think they have a lot to offer. Now, being a collector for as long as I have, I do know the most expensive N64 titles. The top five valued games of this purchase actually equate to one third of the entire collection price. But the biggest game worth around $1,000 is a game called Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut. Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut is the poster game for being a Blockbuster rental exclusive. You could only rent them through Blockbuster, which meant inherently that you have low print runs. You can't, you know, you're not gonna sell a million copies of a game that you could only rent at, you know, tens of thousands of stores, if not less. You couldn't even buy it. You could only ever rent it at Blockbuster locations. Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut and Transformers Beast Wars, both of those manuals 
retail for I think well over a grand. I think the Clay Fighter one's pushing two or three grand, if not more. It gets rented into the hands of children and um, adults who act like children, and then that goes that goes through its life cycle, and it's going to get damaged, beat up. So Blockbuster then, you know, they slap those huge, you know, buy it now for six ninety nine, you know, or you know whatever stickers on it. So just through time, so many copies were lost or thrown out or just not even distributed because I'm pretty sure it was also given a very limited number since they weren't actually selling it. Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut is the the big mythological white whale because only yeah. about eighteen thousand. Uh, units of that are estimated to have been produced. I and and I oh, okay. I've tried to source a number on that, but that's the one that I see pop up on the internet the most. And yes, there is at least one confirmed sealed copy on the Wada Pop Report. So despite it not ever being available for people to purchase, it was still shipped to the stores as a normal factory sealed game. A friend of mine is a collector, had a had a copy of it. And, um, and we worked out a price that worked for me. And then my strategy was, I'm gonna hang on to as a double cartridge for me. My cartridge of the game is, well, that just fell down. My cartridge <laughs> of the game is this one right here. And you can see the labels cut out a little bit. I kind of think it's charming in that way. I love yeah. that it's imperfect and it's clearly my copy. So I have this well, one here. I've only ever come, I've only ever seen one box in person. Yeah, th I have mine in like this super duper case, but um, this is my, my copy here. I mean, you can see it's just in perfect shape. Um, there's a slight little bit of corner and edge wear. I also wanted to find out if the actual rare games get respect in the high end and sealed market. So it depends what you mean by get respect because the very rare CIB games still do sell for a lot of money sealed, like Stunt Racer recently sold for 13,800. Beast Wars recently sold for 19,200. Bomberman Second Attack recently sold for 9,000. So they absolutely still do get love in the sealed world. They just aren't the absolute tippy top grails. The people who have deep pockets, the people who want a really special piece, gravitate towards the most popular stuff. So generally speaking, the games that do sell for the most right now are your super big titles with the most history, the most nostalgia. Think your big Nintendo IPs like Mario, Zelda, Kirby. If you go over to the world of PlayStation, it's your Crash Bandicoot, your Spyro the Dragon, your Tomb Raider. The games that really defined the consoles or really put other games on the map, so to speak. The most provenance, the most history, the most memorable big titles that everybody knows, that everyone grew up playing. Those are the ones right now that are really commanding the highest premiums. And it's so, it's just so weird. This is a video game. It's a boxed video game. Yet culturally, we've assigned so much value to this stuff. And I don't have this stuff because it assigns, it's, there's value to it. I have it because I just am an enthusiast and a hobbyist yeah. and really enjoy it. Not because it's like, well, watch me flex everyone on this piece of expensive yeah. cardboard. You know what I mean? So. Oh, totally. It's a little weird. I mean, if you step back from our hobby a little bit of just how bizarre some of our habits are. Now, Sculptor's Cut is the most expensive N64 game, but if you do want to get technical, the actual most expensive game is a not for resale variant. So my favorite N64 piece I actually do have with me here. It is this gray Majora's Mask cartridge, not for resale <laughs> demo cartridge. Honestly, a piece that I never thought I would even own. It's always been very rare. It's always been very expensive. <laughs> I finally had a chance to purchase it where it was like reasonable for me to do so and I just kind of went for it. I love Zelda on N64, love Majora's Mask, this thing will be staying with me for a super long time. Now the collection I'm buying is from a viewer. He just kind of enjoys collecting, completing sets uh, and has done this for years. And in this case I'll be buying every cartridge, not with all the boxes. Otherwise, this whole thing could cost more than the Hobby Shop buyout and maybe even the Game Bar buyout combined. So I won't be as cool as Mort or Greg, but maybe someday I'll take on the challenge to get every N64 game complete in the box. It's the day of the N64 collection buy. 
But we have a problem. I requested videos of the main two games working, the most valuable games, Clay Fighter, Sculptor's Cut, and he was good with that, was gonna send it, but he only has HDMI TVs and his HDMI converter was not working. Tried it on multiple systems, couldn't get it to go. So that is obviously a problem that I cannot make the purchase unless I see them working. So last night I went out and did a PS5 trade. I got some clips along the way, but my kids were with me, so just limited stuff. Um, but got home, and here we have this box, and what's inside of this? All that I traded for my last Horizon PS5. I'm pretty excited about this trade, and there is an N64 in it. But first off, this laptop was part of it. This, hopefully, if it works, <laughs> there's a lot of question marks on this trade, will be a $500 laptop, and one that we can absolutely use for the new studio, for doing whatnot lives and, and various things, maybe I don't know, a podcast or something, if that ever happens. Um, but that can be dedicated to that and just used separately from my personal setup if it works. So hopefully that's the value of the trade. And then all of this stuff was also included. Crazy, got an Xbox Series S. Kind of a joke, but still, to get that as part of the trade. And then this, that's legit Nintendo brand. So he didn't send the pictures of the controller. This is not a Jungle Green controller. This is in my opinion, the most, the most rare mass-produced controller, it's Extreme Green. So it's got the neon yellow look, but Extreme Green is the official name. We're gonna have Matt repair that joystick to get it beautiful, but that is gonna be a collection piece. I'm very excited about that. Um, but the system is down here, and this is the most important piece that we need to bring with us today. So we're also gonna have to grab that TV, and I'm gonna bring that so we can test it in the van. We can test the main games that really need to be tested. We're gonna open them up, make sure they're authentic as far as the boards go, but then we also need to make sure they work and load up the right game, make sure there's no board swaps or anything like that. Um, but this trade did come with these three games, nice ones, Mario Kart 64, Pokemon Snap, and Mario 64. And then we've got everything else inside of here. All of these 360 games, the 360 system. I had him throw in three of these PS2 games because he wanted to keep the PS2 but didn't care about these games. Some nice ones to say the least. Um, and then we've also got another N64 controller it looks like. Didn't know that was included. And he was gonna do a DSi XL, asked if it was cool to replace that with the Game Boy SP in three games. <laughs> I said, uh, all right, uh, because I love the Game Boy SP. That's my favorite handheld system of all time. It looks like the games are Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Dual Academy, Mario Kart, and Mario Luigi Superstar Saga. So all of that for a PS5. Pretty excited about it. But now, it's time. Let's go pick up a complete N64 collection. Looks like he's here. Let's make it happen. Sweet, sweet. Okay. Okay. Do whatever you want. <laughs> One giant tote, you got it. Yeah, I just roll it here. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I've been just collecting for like three years or so and Okay. Wanted to get the N sixty four set, that was like my main goal was to just get that and got it done a couple months ago and Okay. You know, I, I think I enjoyed the hunt more than playing it. I hardly ever play it, you know. So I, I understand. Yeah. 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 So but. so you started collecting in general three years ago. How long would you say it took you specifically? I started with this, and then I kind of started collecting everything. So I mean, I got okay. a big GameCube, I got a big PlayStation 2 collection. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this took you know the three years probably. Okay. Uh, and actually, the the last <laughs> one I got was Clay Fighter 63 and a third. It wasn't Sculptor's Cut. <laughs> really? That was the hardest one to find. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That is very random. So how did yeah. you acquire? Where did you get most of them? So I'm an auctioneer. So I I buy stuff through auctions and like really? i saw yeah like i've seen you buy off like high bid before i have and yeah. uh like that's the platform we use to sell stuff and uh huh. I, I think i was on it like before a lot of other people bought off yeah. of there because yeah. i mean i bought a whole game store out of like uh detroit like two years ago i mean i just bought like the entire inventory really you know, yeah but most of these i mean some of it was like my personal collection when i was a kid okay um a lot of it I bought in bulk. You know, the, the couple of the rarer ones I had to buy off eBay. Yeah. Um, but that was before all the prices skyrocketed. So, okay. you know, I bought Sculptor's Cut for 600 bucks. And, you know, I think wow. Super okay. Bowling was like 150 or 200 bucks, something like that. So you got this so, off of eBay. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a good sign when they have some wear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like that too. Sweet. 
And you sent me the board pics of this mm -hmm. one yep. and of this one. Yep. So this one you got on eBay too? Yep. Yep. So what's special about these ones? What well, <laughs> Super Bowling, I honestly don't really know other than the fact that it's very rare. Do you know? I think it was like one of the last games made uh, on the system. And that's that why there, right. there like wasn't many copies of it. Late release. It's a terrible nobody game. Nobody cared anymore. That. Bad game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it checks all the boxes for not selling well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then this one, um, rental exclusive. Yeah. So Blockbuster only. Now there are some that have um, like original boxes. So apparently they still came with an original box to mm. Blockbuster. Yeah. But it's very hard to find the box like without a massive Blockbuster sticker or something like, like that on there, or even the cartridge without a sticker. So that's kind of cool that this one at least has a sticker properly removed. I don't know if it ever had one on it. And then Stunt Racer, do you know the story on this one? Not, not a whole lot, no. Okay, so we'll have to ask somebody about Stunt Racer. But this is like probably 500 bucks these days? Yeah, yeah, it's gone up a lot. Something like that. But I remember when it was a lot cheaper. Well, Sculptor's Cut is probably a thousand-ish. I haven't checked. Yeah, it's right around there. 1200 I think, is like the top, you know. But. And then Super Bowling. Gosh, I don't know Super Bowling. I think last I saw was like seven or something like that, maybe, around 700 there. 700-ish. Yeah. So, I know a guy that got this game, Fort Wayne area, from a game store, sealed. And they priced it at loose cart price oh of five years God. ago. So he got it for like 10 bucks. Oh my gosh. Still has it. <laughs> That's crazy, but I think the, the sealed market is interesting on this stuff because even though Super Bowling is probably the most rare game, you would rather have a Mario 64 sealed as far as value right. goes, which is kind of crazy. It's all about supply and demand, but Beast Wars, yeah, that's a big one. This is so many games. No mercy. There is a variant of this one that says USA dash, what, one? Yep. And that was a version where they fixed a glitch in the game. Did you know about this? Yeah, I've heard that story. They fixed a glitch in the game and then sent you the updated cartridge and it is quite uncommon. That's more like three to $500 where this is probably 40 to 50, the regular version. I want to test a couple of these. Yep, that's fine. Um, I'm still with this whole side. <laughs> yeah, but thankfully Dalton got them nicely sorted for us. So probably these are the main ones. I do have that one in the collection. All right, let's do it. Yeah, so we're gonna set up a TV, brought an N64 to test kind of the key games to make sure the boards look good in the pictures and everything. And then did you bring bits to yeah, take stuff yeah. apart? So we might take them apart after we kind of test them just to make sure they're not reproduction or anything like that. Um, but first I'm gonna hook up the N64 and the TV Hopefully we get good power here. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta love the minivan, like, just built in. I mean, we, we don't even need the TV. We could have hooked it up to the TVs in the van. We've got an AV slot in the van. <laughs> gotta make sure it's on AV. All right, I'm gonna start with, uh... <clears throat> we'll start with Conker's Bad Fur Day. We gotta work our way up a little bit. That one's looking great. For mature audiences only, you know that's Conkers. <laughs> the glorious ninja. Can you see that? It's probably really bright. Stunt racer. So we're kind of doing the main six, and I'll gloss over the other ones, but you can tell that we're gonna be good to go. Everything feels, looks good. I even brought some Q-tips just in case. Oh yeah. Stunt Racer. This is actually the first time I've ever had this game. I almost got one in a trade once. Worms Armageddon. Now this one came out for Dreamcast, maybe PS1? Do you know if it came out for I think PS1? So, yeah. yeah. I never knew why it was worth a bunch on the N64. Mario 64 for me was the game that rocked my world as a kid. <laughs> I don't know if you remember when that came out, but that was like, oh, yeah. what can games be? <laughs> yeah. like, that was just an amazing game. What was the first game that started you off? collection well I would say I mean as a kid I had you know the main you know Mario's and and stuff like that and then 
I don't know, just something happened. Me and a couple friends went to a couple game stores and I saw, you know, N64 games were super cheap when I started started collecting. Yeah. You know, I was buying all these sports games for two, three bucks. And, uh -huh. and I was like, oh, you know, there's only 296 of them. I'm just gonna buy them all. Achievable, you know? yeah. 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 And, and so then that, that just kind of snowballed into that. <laughs> I like it. So Worms and Beast Wars, they work. Bomberman 64, Super Bowling, and Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut. <laughs> Somebody's yelling over there, so we're making sure we're not. So, so I have a question for you. All right. You say the 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 thrill of the find and all that really inspired this. Yeah. Um, have you always been that way? Yeah. So yeah. like as a kid, it, it, you were. It, yeah, and it's no matter what, you know. Like I got. Uh -huh. I, you know, I like start a hobby, and it's just like I got to be all in on it. You know, <laughs> yep. it's just. Yeah. So I, I'm still gonna go for like GameCube and PS2, I think. But, okay. And I'll slowly build the N64 back up, but. Oh I yeah, just, that's yeah, fun. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I just. I never play it, so. Yeah. Just... What do you got for GameCube? How many? How many are out for GameCube? Do you know that? I don't. U.S. Know titles? That. No, I'm not. A, I'm do you not remember? It's like six, six in the six hundred. Something like that. I think yeah. it's in the six hundreds. Yeah. I think I got like two eighty or something like that right now. Okay. Uh, and probably my biggest one is um, uh, what's the NBA two K three? Oh, it? the NCAA two yeah. K three. Or NCAA two K three. Yep, that's what it is. You got yeah. that complete. I have that. Yeah, complete. Yep. All right, kind of the. Three of the biggest ones, Bomberman 64, Second Attack. Definitely looks legit. <laughs> Used to be from Family Video, which is a regional chain. Uh, like Blockbuster, if you don't know what it is, uh, it just went out of business literally last year. So Dalton knows, and I know, that Blockbuster was not the last rental store that was on a pretty big scale. It was Family Video. And uh, they had all the games, all the movies, just like Blockbuster did. And we had like two in our hometown, and it's looking good. Only one needed a second attempt. That was Stunt Racer. So far, everything else is fired up on the first go. After we test these two, we'll crack them open, make sure the boards look legit. But I got a good feeling about it. Do you know what makes this game so bad? <laughs> I don't know. I've never played it, honestly. I don't know. I've never played it either. I've never had this at all. I've never, it's a bowling game I've never held yeah, this exactly. game. Yeah, it's a super boring. bowling. Yeah, That's fun. pretty unique. And the moment of truth, Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut. This is the holy grail of N64 collecting. Massive game. This is gonna be a first. Cartridge definitely looks legit, label looks right. It's got minor wear, overall really nice condition. <clears throat> it feels right, it's the right weight, the right feel, right texture. There are a lot of reproduction cartridges on N64. That's why we're taking this seriously because they look pretty good. For the untrained eye, it's hard to tell, but the labels are generally more saturated. The weight, the feel is a little bit off. Um, I've seen videos of people just feeling them blind and being able to tell, so the feel is definitely a part of it. This looks good, and I like that it has minor wear to show that you know it wasn't just remade last year yeah, from a factory. It would be too clean. So we're gonna fire this one up. Blockbuster exclusive. Can we get it on the first try? We can, let's go. Play Fighters Sculptor's Cut. It is looking fantastic. First try. So yeah, we're looking really good. And as we're doing this, Dalton is opening up the Super Bowling cartridge so we can verify the board on that one. There's kind of two things you have to open up on N64 cartridges, but we're good. We'll open this one up too and make sure everything's good, but I think we're gonna we're gonna buy a complete N64 collection. So here's the uh, Super Bowling. Main things to look for, and we'll verify this with experts, but you know, Nintendo, the, the font needs to look good, the year needs to be on there, the chips also. This one, 1995 Nintendo. Thank you for being willing to do that. <laughs> that definitely helps. And there's Clay Fighter. So it looks pretty similar. It's got the good Nintendo markings on there. The font looks good. And then you flip it around, look at the chips. 1995 Nintendo. And they worked and played well. That's the other thing to make sure that somebody didn't swap out. Because you can see these look almost identical. There's probably minor differences in the games, but you could, you know, somebody could send you a picture of a wrestling chip, right? So that's why you want to make sure that it actually works in the console and the board checks out. You got to have both to be 100% confident. So everything looks great. I'll do a once over of some of the other games, but 
I'm not worried at all, and we're gonna buy. We're gonna buy it. All right. All right. We did it. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. So, do you have an idea? Are you just gonna sell it, or are you gonna keep it, or? Yeah, I think I am. I'm gonna sell them all. Sell it. That's fine. I pretty much have all the N64 games that I want. So right. We'll probably do honestly one big auction. Yeah. Do a whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't want to deal with that, you know, shipping it to other oh, people, it's... and you know, it's just. <laughs> Once you complete your GameCube collection. Yeah, there you <laughs> Okie dokie, the deal is done. The deal is done. You know, it's blowing my mind. I was like, oh, I need the van today. Because I'm buying a complete N64 collection. It fits in this one tub. That's insane. I, yeah, I was surprised. It's very well stacked. Yeah, like this is an efficiently stacked too high tub. Oh, like here's another big one, just chilling. But there's a lot of big games on N64. StarCraft 64 is a massive one. This is going to be Pokemon Stadium 2. Looks in, in beautiful condition. And he sent me pictures of everything, and everything checked out in the pictures. But you just want to kind of make sure, once you see it all, and once you handle it all, that it checks out. And man, this is all looking fantastic. Here's one of the greatest games of all time. <laughs> That's a lie. It's actually very infamously horrible. <laughs> Superman 64. <laughs> oh man, just so many. So Now we, we believe him 100% that all the games are here, but let's take yep. them home. Let's count them all out. Let's, get let's, them all laid let's out. lay them out. And, and you know what else we can do? What? I have so many manuals and boxes oh. that are oh. empty. We now have every single game. <laughs> so we can pair all of we them. We have to complete at least one, statistically <laughs> really? speaking. It has to happen. I don't know how many boxes I have, probably 10 boxes, but like dozens of manuals. So we're, we're going to complete and add manuals to a bunch of these, which I'm very excited about. We'll see what we get. Uh, completed at home as well. There's a lot more we need to discuss, including selling the entire collection to you guys and how we're gonna do that. Back home, everything checked out with the collection. We've got it in hand, but we've got to do something else. We're gonna take every single one of these games, take them out of the tub, organize them from least expensive to most expensive, kind of set up a bar graph on this table. It's gonna be awesome, but really just to give me an idea of you know, what values have shifted, what games are kind of worth these days, and to give you an idea of what games to look for when you're out in the wild, what games that you can target. But not only that, so buried over here, on this lovely shelf, almost to be forgotten about, I have literally hundreds of N64 manuals. So all of those, you know, all of the single ones are now gonna find a pair. So we're gonna pair them all together and see how many games with manuals we end up with too. This is a hefty stack of manuals. I'm actually really, really excited about this because I was just thinking in my head, man, we're never gonna complete or use all of these manuals. But today, outside <laughs> of duplicates, every single one of them is gonna be used. And I'm super excited about that. Plus we have all the boxes over here. Not that many, but maybe like eight, 10 boxes. They're all gonna find a home as well. So we got these here for sure. I have these ones over here. So all these have been sitting here empty for so long. Are these from the game barn? No, I've, I've just got these from various collections over the years. And what was that? Ten, nine boxes that are going to be completed as well. I said earlier, I'm pretty content with my collection. The copies in my collection are all really nice. So I don't think there's going to be label upgrades. I've got all the games that I really want. So I'm gonna be selling all of these in one big whatnot auction. And I wanna see you know, how much we can in increase the value. A complete N64 collection is worth roughly about $7,400, $7,500 cartridge only on price charting right now. Um, but with all these boxes and manuals, I'm hoping we can increase the value a lot because I did pay up for these. I paid 6,500 bucks, which I knew was like, there's probably not really any money to be made, especially after fees. But I know that a lot of these games are really tough for people to find, and I want to be able to help other people get the games they're looking for in their collection. So I'm excited to bring literally every single game to the table. So if you need one, you can come to the auction and get one here. And especially because a lot of them will be paired with manuals, boxes. It's going to be fun. So we're going to organize the games into five value brackets. We're going to do under 10 on the left, 10 to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 100, and 100 and over to give an idea of which games are individually sellable, which ones are going to be just kind of lottable, and which ones are really worth looking for if you see them out in the wild. All right, so we're going to organize the manuals, and then from here, we're going to start stacking them up, and definitely games to look out for, common ones that are worth a lot of money, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here we have.
have it. Every N64 game organized by value. There's definitely some surprises in there for me, so which we will highlight. These are the ones under $10, only 48 titles here. These are between 10 and 25. We did end up adding 75 manuals, which is awesome. Those were the duplicates, so we still got that stack. We'll probably sell some of those in the same auction, but 10 to 25. All right here, this is the biggest pile, 130. I thought there'd be more under 10, but most games on N64 are over 10, which is awesome. 25 to 50 here. Some of the manuals bumped them into this bracket, but a lot of them were solid titles like Mario 64, Donkey Kong. These are the ones that get interesting, 50 to 100. And a lot of these you might not know about, which I have some separated. So International Superstar Soccer 2000, $72 game. Rocket. Robot on Wheels, that's an $87 cartridge. Star Shot is 70. Going Quackers is expensive. Big Mountain 2000, 88. Star Soldier, me. yeah, this one surprised me, the Razor Scooter game. And that one is also a Blockbuster exclusive, like some of these others. Uh, Indiana Jones, 71, I didn't realize it was that high. Rat Attack, just a good one to look for. And all of these are above $50. And then these, the top 10 N64 games. This one a lot of people might not have known about, PGA European Tour. Now, I knew about this one, but I would have guessed it was closer to $50. So $138 is crazy. Duck Dodgers, $130. Bucks. Like, N64 has really gone up recently. Goemon's Great Adventure. Anything with Goemon is good. $121. There's Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. Ogre Battle. Mystical Ninja Goemon. And NFL Blitz Special Edition. That's another key sports title to look for. We do have a sports game list in the Discord. If you're interested, check out the Discord group. But these are the other like heavies, the six heaviest of N64. Not anymore. <laughs> Beast Wars Transmetals. The golf game passes that. That's crazy. Uh, Bomberman 64, uh, the second attack. Stunt Racer is a big one, 380. Play Fighter Sculptor's Cut, of course, 950, though I think it's probably closer to 1200 in this condition. Worms Armageddon at 275 and Super Bowling at 675. Many probably didn't know about that one, but these are the games you gotta know. So guys, it's really cool to see the full, complete N64 set. Easily fits on a table, no problem. It all fit in that bin, which blew my mind. 296 games, it's one of the achievable sets. This and Wii U, if you're gonna go for complete sets, those are great ones to go for. N64, there's a reason when this comes out at a garage sale, I get super excited. There's very few games under $10. Thing is, most of them in this 25 to 50 range are the ones that you get in every single bundle. The Mario 64, the Donkey Kong, the Pokemon stuff, the really high end or, or high demand games. So they're the popular fun ones. Exactly, like N64 is glorious. There's a reason it has good value and I'm just stoked to have it all laid out and organized in this way. Hopefully this brought some value to you guys. Let me know what your N64 grail piece is. Now we have to sell them in a day. Let's do it. So this video is brought to you by Whatnot. All of this stuff will be in a Whatnot auction in November, but even sooner than that, we've got one over here. I've got it set up on the table. Come with me. <laughs> So this is gonna be a high-end auction, and Sky Guy, I hope you can put when this will be. Oh yeah, right, right here. <laughs> so, graded games, got like 10 of them here. This is a sealed GameCube. <laughs> Zelda, Twilight Princess, that's graded, sealed GameCube. This is a kiosk PS1 system. Star Wars figures case, gonna have at least a dozen vintage figures in there. This is a minty, fresh challenge set, like immaculate. Yeah, the actual challenge set with the challenge the, thing the on it. The proper box, yep. It's got the sticker or whatever it is on the box. Pokemon Emerald, oh. Mario, Mario Kart Double Dash, Mario Party 6. This is like just the beginning of what's gonna be at that auction. It's gonna be crazy. Uh, I think I'll give away 50 games as well. So 50 <laughs> games being given away. Come hang out with us. We have a ton of fun and whatnot. Me and Sky Guy get to, it's just a good time. Good time mm -hmm. hanging out and selling stuff. So come to this auction, and then a couple weeks after that is gonna be this auction. So if you don't have Whatnot yet, check our link in the description. Get that 10 free dollars, that's to spend. You get $10 in credit if you use our link. And we usually have a bunch of buy it nows around that $10 mark for easy purchases to use your credit. And then of course you can get any of this stuff as well. We got some crazy plans over there. So come follow us, come hang out, use that link and we will see you over on OneNote. And I forgot to mention, I'm giving away all this too for that auction. Like all seven of those games, these are different ones. These are extra ones that we got in a trade. Plus this completed box N64 with two controllers. That's actually the one I had as a kid. 
got that set for Christmas. My brother did, but you know, I kind of did too. So giving all that away, selling a bunch of those manuals too. So come hang out with us. Barrel Dew Crap Mustang, Malt Licky. Bye. Chase after the ride.